Good morning, children. Today we are going to describe, discuss on how metals react with non-metals. The previous sessions we have already seen that how the metals react with the other elements and compounds and even non-metals. So before we go through this process, we need to understand how these compounds or elements react to each other. So in order to understand this better way, we need to understand the electronic configuration and structure of an atom. The physical properties and chemical properties of both we have been already studied. And now let us see how a metal reacts with a non-metal. On the basis of the reactivity of metals, they have been arranged in a series called as reactivity series. The metals of high reactivity are placed on top of the series and as we go down the series, the reactivity of the metals are decreasing. So on the basis of this reactivity series, so we can categorize this reactivity series into three categories. Metals such as sodium, potassium, magnesium, they all placed on top of this list and they are highly reactive. And the metals which are placed in the middle of this reactivity series, they are moderate reactive. Metals such as zinc, copper and all are moderate reactive. And some metals they are placed on the bottom of the series and they are less reactive or least reactive metals such as gold, platinum, silver, etc. So when we talk about this reaction between a metal and a non-metal, so we already seen that highly reactive metals they easily react with other elements to produce compounds. But the moderate reactive metal they react with other compounds and elements but not aggressive as the highly reactive metals with others. So the metals which are placed at the bottom of the series they are they do not react at all or they react very slowly with the other elements. So in order to understand the reaction between a metal and a non-metal, so let us see an example sodium and chlorine. This sodium is a metal and gold is a non-metal. And the atomic number of sodium is 11 and the chlorine is 70. So the atomic number means the number of protons or electrons in these elements. Atoms of the elements are same. Sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons in it. Chlorine has 70 protons and 70 electrons in it. So these electrons are distributed in an discrete energy shells around the nucleus. So they are revolving around the nucleus and protons and neutrons are concentrated in the nucleus of the atom. So if you write the electronic configuration of the sodium, we get as 2, 8, 1. And the electronic configuration of chlorine is 2, 8, 7. Okay. So 2 electrons in the first shell, 8 electrons in the second shell and 1 electron in the third shell which is the outermost shell of sodium. And in chlorine, 2 electrons in the first shell, 8 electrons in the second shell and 7 electrons in the third shell which is the outermost shell of chlorine. 
So here, what will be with the outermost shell? The outermost shell of an atom is the the last orbit. Here, in order to this, since both of these elements have not a stable configuration. So these both will try to attain a stable configuration. That is why the elements, atoms of the elements, they react with the other element, atoms of the elements or compounds. So they are trying to get a stable configuration. Then what do you mean by the stable configuration or what is the condition for the stable configuration? The condition for the stable configuration is having 8 electrons in the outermost shell. Okay. So here this for the sodium, the first two shells are occupied by the maximum number of electrons. So they are uh, satisfied the maximum number of uh, the maximum number of electrons. For chlorine also the first two shells are satisfied with the maximum number of electrons. But the third shell or the outermost shell of sodium, so only one electron it has. That means how many more electrons can be accommodated in the outermost shell of sodium? Seven more electrons can be accommodated. And for the chlorine, one more electron can be accommodated in the outermost shell. So that both will get a stable configuration. Then, when the sodium and chlorine react each other, we mean that only the electrons present in the outermost shell of the atom react each other. React each other means what? They are rearranging the electrons from the outermost shell only. The other shells, these electrons, they do not change any number because they have the maximum number of electrons in it. Not more than that, not less than that. Here only the number of electrons are either more or less where the outermost shell. So what will happen? These atoms of these elements will try to get a stable configuration. How they can attain? They can attain the stable configuration by both ways. Let us see for, for sodium. Sodium can attain a stable configuration either removing this one electron from its outermost shell or accepting seven more electrons from any other atoms. So that means by removing one electron or accepting seven electrons, energy is required. And for in the case of accepting electrons, seven electron has to be accepted. That means bringing seven electrons in this outermost shell also require energy. Okay. So which one will uh, consume more energy by bringing seven electron or removing one electron? Definitely bringing seven more electrons to the outermost shell of the sodium will consume more energy. So which way is the easier? By removing one electron from its outermost shell. If one electron is removed from this outermost shell of the sodium, what will happen? And that shell completely will be eliminated. Now only two shells will be there and this will be the outermost shell of the sodium then. So having eight electron in it, so it has a stable configuration. So what is the problem? To remove this one electron. Now the question is to where the sodium will remove this electron. So the sodium will donate this one electron to some other atoms or definitely here to the chlorine. Now this is the case of chlorine. See chlorine has seven electrons in its outermost shell. Only one more electron they required to attain the stable configuration. Okay. So what otherwise the chlorine has to remove seven electrons from its outermost shell. So the easiest way is accepting one electron to the outermost shell that does consume less energy. So the chlorine will prefer to accept one electron from some other atoms. So here is a donor and here is a receiver. So the sodium is ready to donate one electron to the chlorine. Chlorine is required one more electron only. So that what will happen? Both sodium and chlorine will get a mutually will get a stable configuration. Okay? This one electron will be transferred to the outermost shell of the chlorine atom. 
from the outer cluster of the sodium atom. So here you see only the electrons from the outer cluster rearranging themselves for what to get a stable configuration or to get an object arrangement. So so that both atoms of the elements will get a stable configuration. So now the problem is that when one electron is transferred here, okay, so an electron has energy as I said before. So the energy is transferring to the outermost field of another atom of the another element. So it requires energy that means the sodium will reduce one electron and that means that means that much amount of energy. So this process will one electron is removed or transferred, so one iron will be formed. That iron will be so represented by sodium ion. Okay. With a positive side. That means this is a sodium ion. One sodium ion will be produced here. Okay. How the sodium ion electron is removed? Energy is decreased in that case. When the chlorine is accepting one electron, it is accepting energy. That means the energy is increasing. So what will happen? The chlorine will produce one negative ion. So these ions are called as called as cation and anions. So then these ions are formed. Okay. So these both ions are oppositely charged particles. So since here one positive ion is present, here one negative ion is present. So these positive and negative charges they will attract each other. So then there will be an electrostatic force of attraction between sodium and chlorine. Okay. Now we write this equation as a chemical formula. How we write sodium reacts with chlorine to form sodium chloride. Okay. So that is simply the of this reaction between a metal and a non metal sodium and chlorine. So sodium reacts with chlorine to produce sodium chloride. And this sodium chloride consists of this positive and negative ions in it. So there we have a force of attraction between them. And that force of attraction between the positive ions in the sodium and negative ions in the chlorine produce a bond between them. And this bond is okay, called as ionic bond. So this so we can Conclude that the ionic bond is formed by transferring the electron from one atom of the element to the other atoms of the same element or the different element. Both they can be possible. So an ionic compound is formed. Since there is an electrostatic force of attraction between these two atoms of the two elements, this bond formed between these two are also known as electrovalent and the compound formed by the transfer of electrons are also known as electrovalent compounds. Okay. So when a metal and a non-metal react each other, ionic bond is formed or electrovalent bond is formed, then the compound that formed by transferring electron from the outermost shell of one atom to the another is also known as ionic compound or Electrovalent compounds. So, the pro what are the properties of ionic compounds or electrovalent compounds? So, we have already seen that uh, these ionic compounds or electrovalent compounds are formed by the electrostatic force of attraction between the anions and cations. So, the physical nature of this uh, electrovalent compound or ionic compounds are normally slowly. So, why because the, the force of attraction between these uh, electric charges, they are strong. So, that is why the strong force of attraction made them a solid state and also it is a brittle in nature. Okay? It forms a crystalline form so that uh, ionic compounds are produced as a crystal lattice and so therefore they are brittle in nature. 
so that is the physical state of ionic compounds and second solubility ionic compounds are soluble in water so they are soluble in water and they are they do not dissolve in other solvents such as alcohol and gross then that is the solubility of second property solubility and third is uh, melting point and boiling point of electrolyte compounds so as i said before it has a strong force of attraction between the ions so this strong force of attraction made a rigid structure for this ionic compounds so that the in order to break this force of attraction between the ions more energy is required more energy in the form of heat or any other form so therefore normally these ionic compounds or electrolytic compounds are high melting point and boiling point then conductivity conductivity of this ionic compounds and or electrolytic compounds so the ions are produced okay ions are produced in the during the formation of ionic compounds or electrolytic compounds so therefore there is a possibility to conduct the electricity because ions electric part uh, charged particles can conduct the electricity through them but also we have seen that the physical nature of this ionic compounds they are rigid so there is not much space in between them to move the electric charged particles to conduct electricity so in a physical state or solid state ionic compounds or electrolytic compounds do not conduct electricity but in a dissolved form a ionic compound is dissolved in water is much free space inside them so ions are free to move so that we can conduct electricity through them so these are all about the uh, formation of ionic compounds or electrolytic compounds ionic compounds or electrolytic compounds are formed when a metal react with non metal they are formed by the transfer of electrons from the outermost of one atom of the element to the other atoms of the different elements of compounds so they transfer the electrons completely so during this transfer the uh, transformation the they produce cations and anions so that they produce there is a strong force of attraction between the ions and that strong force of attraction makes a bond between the elements to produce a compound so the properties of ionic compounds physical state is a solid state and solubility it is also water it does not dissolve in other solvents like alcohol rosin etc and thus normally high melting point and boiling point and they conduct electricity in dissolved form but do not conduct 